Iran and the UN's nuclear watchdog are set to resume talks later on Friday, more than two months after the previous round failed. Tehran insists it's only, it only wants peaceful energy, but the West remains suspicious of its nuclear ambitions. Hopes aren't high for these negotiations either, while Iranian citizens continue to be hit hardest by U.S. and European sanctions. For more on this, we're joined by James Corbett, journalist and editor of The Corbett Report, an online multimedia news and information source. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Corbett. Now, ahead of the talks, uh, the IAEA chief said he's not optimistic. Is this the position we should expect from an UN agency boss? And isn't this just counterproductive before they even get underway? It is absolutely counterproductive, but unfortunately, this is exactly what we would expect from the head of the IAEA, because unfortunately, the IAEA has been exposed during this entire Iranian uh, dispute as as little more than a gang of thugs rather than a bureaucratic agency that's trying to neutrally arbitrate this dispute. And really, what it demonstrates is that the nuclear uh, powers that 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 currently exist are are really trying to enforce a monopoly on nuclear power. And and dictating what countries can or cannot have access to that, so that they're attempting to uh, to hold the Iranian uh, government, which is a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, to higher standards than other members of the IAEA uh, who are currently um, using nuclear power. And of course, uh, one of the, the biggest detractors of Iran and the Iranian nuclear program is Israel, which itself is not a signatory to the N Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and has hundreds of, uh, of nuclear weapons itself, which have never been uh, publicly and officially disclosed. So uh, there's there's a lot going on under the surface here, but it, it just goes to show that unfortunately the IAEA decision has already been made before its report has even been finalized. It's interesting that you say that. It's almost sort of like, what's the point of actually going into these talks? Now, the IAEA has said that they need to avert a crisis of trust. Is the access to the Parchin facility, which in the past they've always said that they need to get access in that facility in order to make uh, uh, an you know, to, to, to actually give the, the final saying of whether Iran has nu a nuclear program. Why won't Iran allow that? Well, in fact, they, they have already committed to allowing that uh, if the IAEA is, uh, works with the Iranian government on the schedule for those uh, those inspections and uh, gives a detailed list of exactly what it is they're there for inspecting. And I don't think that that's an unreasonable list of demands, given the way that we've seen that people who are in the crosshairs of the international community have been treated by these supposed neutral arbit arbiters of these uh, weapons programs. So we saw, for example, Saddam Hussein was, in fact, quite cooperative in many ways with the international weapons inspectors that, that were uh, conducting weapons inspections prior to the invasion of Iraq in 2003. And we had uh, people like David Kelly uh, basically blowing the whistle on that and him ending up mysteriously dead in the woods exactly as he had predicted he would uh, be found. So we see a lot of these, these underhanded uh, tactics that are used to undermine governments that are cooperative with these agencies. So I don't think it's unreasonable for the Iranian government simply to ask uh, for uh, details of what it is the IAEA is going to be looking for when they give them access to these sites. And so it's uh, it's being spun as if this is some kind of rejection on Iran's part, but it's actually not. Where is Israel in all of this? Well, that's that's a very uh, important question because it, it will not have escaped the attention of anyone who's keeping an eye on these issues that this this IAEA report coincides precisely with this latest round of Iran war hysteria that's being whipped up in Israel and uh, for, from a number of strategic leaks, etc., coming from inside the Israeli government. And uh, there's definitely a new concerted push yet again um, from Israel to try to get uh, the international community behind some sort of targeted strike on Iran. And, uh, and we have to look at the IAEA, re IAEA report in the context of that latest uh, Iran war hysteria. So it, it certainly uh, feeds into a lot of what we're seeing in uh, various uh, diplomatic uh, channels about uh, an increased likelihood of a strike on Iran in the coming months. Now, we've heard from uh, a lot of the people that we've spoken to who've said that in Iran, the sanctions, they're hitting them hard. It's the people who are suffering. It's not the government who's been affected by these uh, imposed sanctions by the West. What do you think is going to be the reaction as, uh, as much as the West keeps imposing these sanctions on, on the people of Iran? How is going to be the behavior of Iran towards the West? And particularly, how are the people now going to start reacting towards the West? 
Well, that's that's the important part of this puzzle, because I think the, the Iranian people are not stupid enough to realize that the hardships that they're going through as a result of these sanctions are the dire direct result of the international community uh, taking it out on, on them, basically, which is exactly, again, what we saw in the, uh, the decade-long sanctions that were imposed on Iraq after the first Gulf War and before the second Gulf War, which ended up in uh, the death of over half a million Iraqi children, which uh, U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright proclaimed on 60 Minutes was uh, an acceptable uh, loss uh, because th they were achieving their political goals through that sanctions program. Well, yet again, we see the Iranian government is uh, is finding ways around the sanctions and is starting to increase bilater bilateral trade with other countries and even still managing to get uh, nuclear parts. There's a, a German uh, spy ring or a nuclear smuggling ring that has just been busted that was uh, capable of sending uh, certain uh, parts, uh, safety valves for nuclear reactors to Iran despite the sanctions. So the sanctions once again are, are proving a joke at that uh, governmental level, but for the average person in Iran who is suffering under the uh, economic uh, trickle-down of the, the sanctions, they are the ones that are laboring under this. So I, I, again, it's a question of whether or not the Iranian public will be able to believe that, the, that it's the fault of the Iranian government or the fault of the international community. Right, let's leave it there, Mr. Corbett. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us and our viewers on RT on this subject.